Happy spring and welcome to Make a Difference, the show about how volunteers are making a difference every day right here in Montgomery County. I'm your host, Sandy Smith, and we welcome you here via Zoom due to the ongoing pandemic crisis. In this episode, we will discuss ways the county residents can volunteer to help protect our environment, not just during Earth Month, but any time throughout the year. Today, we are speaking with Larissa Johnson, the Residential Energy Program Manager for the Montgomery County Department of Environmental Protection. Welcome, Larissa. Hi, thank you so very much for having me, Sandy. Thank you for being here today. Since we're dealing with this pandemic, I would imagine that a lot of the Earth Month activities we're used to have become virtual, correct? That is correct. Although we have been trying to do a lot of things to get people out of their homes during this time, very safely, of course, and in their own time frame. So we've had a few opportunities throughout the year. For instance, we have an energy scavenger hunt happening all over the county. There are 60 locations where people can go take a picture of the sign with their phone and then they get prizes like $25 gift cards to different locations throughout the county. So that's something that's been happening all, you know, the entire year ever since last October, which was National Energy Action Month. Oh, wow. That is so fun. So how would a person go about registering for that or What do they do to become involved in that? Sure. So everything is on our website, which is MontgomeryEnergyConnection.org. You can go there for all things energy related and all of our programs are there. You can also go to MyGreenMontgomery.org to find out everything that's happening for Earth Month. So there's a lot going on. Another thing that we've been doing is really, really encouraging people to, to recycle their compact fluorescent light bulbs. So what we have found throughout this pandemic time and also before is that people didn't know that compact fluorescent light bulbs contain mercury. And Ooh. so we want to make sure that people are disposing them properly. So we have some opportunities for volunteering, right? So we have light bulb exchanges. So we're encouraging people, especially if they're if they are members of a congregation or Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, any organization like that, if they're interested in hosting a light bulb exchange, we would love to participate and to partner with them with that. So recycling is really a difficult thing for me anyway. And I think for a lot of people, because Different states have different recycling uh, regulations, and it actually varies by county. So uh, could you tell us a little bit about your Recycle Right program? Of course. So Recycle Right is all about knowing exactly what should be recycled. So if you look at the bottom of your plastic bottles, you're looking for things that are one through five. Those are the things that should be recycled here in Montgomery County. And just like our compact fluorescents, all of that goes to the Shady Grove Transfer Station right on Frederick Road. And so with the compact fluorescents, like I said, they contain mercury. So you're going to go all the way to the end at Shady Grove where the paint and hazardous waste goes. And that's where you recycle them. Those are the only things that cannot go into your into your recycle bin. So if you have county pickup, oh. you can put your plastics into that recycle bin. You could put aluminum into that recycle bin. You could put glass into that recycle bin, but you cannot put compact fluorescent light bulbs. And that's because once they break, they're going to release that mercury and contaminate everything in that recycle bin. So oh, that's wow. Really- I had no idea. Yeah. And the thing is, we don't know that your your compact fluorescent light bulb was in that recycle bin. So it when it breaks, because it will break because they are glass, when it breaks in transport to the transfer station, you have now contaminated or we have now contaminated everything in that in that back of the truck, essentially with mercury. So, yeah. So should we clean our recycling bins regularly just in case something got in there that may Does it, so would it contaminate it also in the future? So for compact fluorescents, thank you for bringing that up. Yes, once they break, they're going to release mercury. So if you were to have a compact fluorescent light bulb break in your home, we encourage you to treat it just like a hazardous waste. So open all your windows, leave the room for about 15 minutes, like air out the room. And then you want to pick up the shards of glass with either a wet paper towel or tape. 
something that's sticky, you want to get those shards of glass. You do not want to use a broom or a vacuum cleaner because once you use that broom or vacuum cleaner, the mercury then goes into that broom or vacuum cleaner. So every time you use that broom or vacuum cleaner, you are potentially putting mercury back into the atmosphere. So exactly what you're saying. If you have thrown away compact fluorescent light bulbs in your recycle bin, I would suggest that you do rinse them out um, just to make sure that the mercury is gone. Um, you're going to have to be very careful because, you know, it, it it is a hazardous waste, so just be careful when you're cleaning anything out. Um, but yes, please make sure your recycle bins are maintained. You don't want to have cross contamination at all in your recycle bins. So. That is great information. So do these programs need volunteers? Yes. So with Department of Environmental Protection and with all of our programs, we always need volunteers because I am the only residential energy program manager for the entire county. And you know, there's 1.1 million people here. So my job is to make sure all residents know how to recycle their compact fluorescent light bulbs correctly or recycle right. Um, so I need help. Yeah, so like I said, we do light bulb exchanges. And so what we encourage and we, we provide SSL hours, student, service learning hours for students yeah. if they need it, if they are there to help us put together an event. Like I said, we have been doing light bulb exchanges even during COVID, but they have been socially distanced all outside. What we do is we go to a congregation on a set day for a few hours, like two to three hours. And so their members of the congregation or the members of that Girl Scout troop all know that we're going to be at this outdoor location from 12 to three. And then people are able to bring their compact fluorescents and incandescent light bulbs and swap them out for LEDs. So we are always looking for opportunities for folks to volunteer their time and to set up one of these light bulb exchanges. We bring everything to you. You just are there like as a volunteer to help, you know, manage the event and to take the light bulbs and, and recycle them properly, recycle them right. So I think that's a wonderful program. Um, how do volunteers, once again, how do volunteers get in, get more information and contact you directly? Yes. So if you are interested in hosting a light bulb exchange outdoors at some event in the future or for your organization, you just email energy at montgomerycountymd.gov. If you don't remember that, you can go to either of the websites, montgomeryenergyconnection.org or mygreenmontgomery.org. And there's always a contact us button. So you can go there and I'll get your information. So it's pretty easy. It's a great way to get student service learning hours for those high school students that need hours. And we just have a lot of opportunities, even with COVID, we're trying to still make sure that there are, are things that, that students can do to help make sure that our environment is clean and that compact fluorescent light bulbs are being recycled right. Wonderful, great information. We've been speaking with Larissa Johnson, the Residential Energy Program Manager for the Montgomery County Department of Environmental Protection. Thanks for joining us today, Larissa. Thank you so very much for having me and don't forget to email me if you'd like to volunteer. When we return, we'll speak with Leslie Wilcox, also with the Montgomery County Department of Environmental Protection, about more activities for Earth Month. Stay with us. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees and drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Our fight against coronavirus isn't over. We still have to slow the spread and do our part. Let's wear face masks in public. Stay six feet or more from others. Follow state and local guidelines. Wash our hands frequently and stay home when we feel safe. For ourselves, for our loved ones, for our future. Let's move forward together. Learn more at coronavirus.gov. back to Make a Difference. I'm your host, Sandy Smith. Every year, Montgomery County hosts Green Fest during Earth Month, and this year it will be virtual. Joining us now is Leslie Wilcox, Watershed Outreach Planner with the Montgomery County Department of Environmental Protection. 
Welcome, Leslie. Thank you. So Leslie, you have a special kickoff for GreenFest. Tell me about it. Um, we are going to do a virtual event on April 1st, the first of GreenFest, and it's going to be from 7 to 8 p.m. And we're going to talk about plogging, how everyone can get involved. And then each week during April, um, you can be eligible to win a prize pack. Um, just some little things that we're trying to give away to encourage people to plog. And um, you can enter that by um, going online to Instagram and posting a photo with the a hashtag Montgomery Plogs or, and or posting it to our page. Or you can also email us a photo. We'll have a different theme each week and our prize packs also have a different theme each week. I love that. That, that might actually get me out there. <laughs> I love a good prize. <laughs> That's what we're hoping. It just adds a little element of competition to it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Tell us how will GreenFest be different this year? Well, we are doing it virtual. Um, like many other things we have had to transition to this year. Um, which is fine. We've actually had a lot of success doing things virtually. So we're excited to give this a try this year. We were unable to hold it last year. So we're excited this year to try this. How will it look different? Um, normally we would have people come and gather. Um, many people in you know, uh, an area where there would be vendors and presentations and workshops for people to go to. So this year, um, we're more or less doing the workshops and presentations online, um, giving people some good ideas of things they can do to stay green. Wonderful, okay. And so what is the hashtag for Montgomery Plogs Challenge? So this is, we're doing a Montgomery Plogging Challenge through all of spring. Normally we would hold big in-person cleanups um, throughout the county during spring. People like to get out, pick up litter, feels good to get outside in the spring and it's a yes. good time, <laughs> it's a good time uh, to take advantage of doing it. So. Normally we would have many cleanups throughout the county of big groups. So we have been unable to do that, of course. So mm -hmm. um, we are, this year, we're gonna try encouraging people to do these individual cleanups. And something that got very popular online is plogging. And so um, people post to Instagram all the time, photos, hashtag plogging of them plogging, which is a combination of jogging or walking and picking <laughs> up trash along your route. <laughs> Well, that's good exercise that we all need to get off of the, these, uh, these COVID pounds. Are there any restrictions for volunteers? There's no restrictions. Um, if you want to get a free plugging pack, um, we encourage you to join our um, plugging campaign. So you go on our website and you can get a free plugging pack that comes with a litter grabber, all the trash bags you will need, um, gloves, you know, we're trying to provide everyone with the materials they'll need to do the cleanup. And then if you're already doing a walk, you can just add this in. So it's not a huge behavior change. So are people creating their own groups or suppose you're an individual, you don't have a group that you usually walk or jog with. Um, and so you just want to join another group. Is there a way for you to connect people together? Sure, you could connect online. Um, we're encouraging people to do it with their households or kind of like the pod that they have been with during COVID. We're trying to reduce um, new exposures or encouraging that. So, um, you know, that's kind of what we're encouraging you to do. If you already have some people you've been around, then maybe you can get them excited about this and get together. We'll get you some blogging packs and you guys can take it away. Great. And how can volunteers get more information about the program? Um, best place to go is going to be our website. We also have the opportunity on the Volunteer Center because you can be eligible for SSL hours. Um, you can earn um, up to one hour a day um, per trash bag you pick up. That's a great way for young people to get together, still socially distance outside and earn some SSL hours. So that's, that's wonderful for them. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Leslie. Thank you for having me. If you're interested in volunteer opportunities, please go to our website, montgomeryserves.org. I'm your host, Sandy Smith. Thank you for joining us. Let's be sure to make a difference.